Last year's draft class is looking special. From Chicago's Ayo Dosumu to Orlando's Franz Wagner, you're about to see a countdown of the best first-year players across the association. Toronto and Cleveland's Scotty B and Evan Mobley seem to be the obvious top two early on, so has that changed? Stay tuned to find out, and of course to see the top 10 rookies in the NBA in 2022. Before continuing, only 11.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. Number 10, Jonathan Kuminga of the Golden State Warriors. Contributing as a limited minute role player for the dubs, Jonathan has shown off elite upside on both ends of the floor for the second seed in the Western Conference. With every NBA minute that JK logs, two things are becoming very evident. A, that he'll play in the inevitable Warriors 2022 title race, and B, that his future is incredibly bright. In short, the athletic wing just has the it factor, which is clear to his all-time great teammate Stephen Curry. Steph said this past Tuesday when asked about traits he can identify that lead to successful careers, quote, you can see the bright spots and just how they're built in terms of their competitive nature, how bad they want to win, and how much they enjoy basketball. People take that for granted these days. Talented physical specimens that have just coasted through different levels, a lot of them don't really like the game and like to put that work in. So you try to watch out for that for the most part. Speaking on Kuminga specifically, Steph said, I mean, you can tell how he's built. He's going to attack, he's going to play his game, and he's got confidence in himself, which you love. Number nine, Herb Jones of the New Orleans Pelicans. The versatility of Herb Jones made him a must have for this top 10, based off the fact that his combination of length, mobility, and shooting touch are the absolute perfect fit for the modern NBA. Jones had another great night for the New Orleans Pelicans against the Warriors, racking up five steals to go along with 13 points and six rebounds. Of course, a lot of what he contributes doesn't show up in the scorecard, but Herb Jones is making his impact felt on both ends, playing lockdown defense and improving every game as a consistent threat offensively with his cutting and drives to the basket. Man leads all rookies in total steals this year. He should be a lock for one of the all rookie teams. Man has a legitimate chance to make all defense soon as well. Number eight, Ayo Dosumu of the Chicago Bulls. A top wing defender in 20 minutes on average each night for a Chi-Town squad that's reigned supreme over the Eastern Conference, the product of Illinois defines diamond in the rough. The 38th overall pick's ability to learn quickly was displayed in an altercation with Bradley Beal that Io revealed post-game against Washington saying, quote, Beal was like, just go deliberately, deliberately go one way and then just get into your shot. Don't think about it. Just take it and drive and get to your spot. The next play, I did it on him. Speaking on why he gave the advice, Beal said he got called for two travels in the corner because he was very indecisive. As a young player, you've got to kind of know what you're going to do before you receive the ball. But as Io showed off to Beal while dropping 18 points on 7 for 9 shooting, along with three steals against Washington, is that he shouldn't be bossed around like a rookie. Dosumu has quickly demanded league-wide respect with his preparation, all-around maturity, and two-way talent all qualities that are wise beyond his years. Number seven, Chris Duarte of the Indiana Pacers. Despite Lance can make him dance returning, Stevenson's already dropped 14 dimes and he had 20 points in five minutes against the Nets a few games ago. But despite Lance going off and Sabonis just dropping a career high, let's face it, the Pacers are having a tough season and are quickly headed towards the lottery with rumors that Sabonis and Turner are getting moved at the trade deadline. But the one bright spot for fans in Indianapolis has been the success of last year's lottery pick in their 13th overall selection, Chris Duarte, who's been extremely productive for a first year pro. At six foot five, 190 pounds, the Pac-12 player of the year in 2021, can maneuver around screens off the dribble for buckets with ease, whether he's stopping on a dime to pull up for deep range bombs or getting by his defender with handles on a string and elite quickness. So the sky's the limit for the Pacers nifty point guard. Number six, Josh Giddy of the Oklahoma City Thunder. It just goes to show how deep the 2021 draft class was, considering a man who's averaging nearly a triple double with LeBron James, Ben Simmons-esque playmaking chops at his six foot eight, 205 pound frame, ranks down at number six on this ranking. Still though, 
I need to see Giddy shoot better than 26% from deep range, considering he's attempting four of those triples per night for the 14th seed in the Western Conference. Number five, Jalen Green of the Houston Rockets. Jalen's combination of quickness and hops were already well known as he arrived at the G League Ignite for his pre-draft season. His shooting ability was less of a sure thing. While Green had some enticing shot-making flashes in high school and on the international stage in helping USA Basketball win three gold medals at FIBA Junior Tournaments, the numbers and the tape would tell the story against grown men in a pro league. All Green did in his 15 games in the G League was average a shade under 18 points per game on brilliant 61.3% true shooting and a 36.5% mark from three-point range on very solid volume. Now those abilities are finally translating over to the pro level in H-Town like we initially expected. Green started very slow in terms of his efficiency, but since returning from a 14-game hamstring injury, the kid looks like a completely vamped and different type of player. Over his last seven games, G-Force is posting 19.2 points per game on a steaming 45% from both the field and from deep range. Maybe there'll be some bumps in the road amidst his development, but one thing's for sure, Houston has a very special talent on their hands in Jalen Green. Number four, Cade Cunningham of the Detroit Pistons. The shiftiest player of anyone on this list today, Cade Cunningham relies on his ability to seamlessly change speed and direction while creating shots for himself. The number one pick displayed that ability against my Raptors with this saucy double crossover to seal a win in a game where I was in attendance for. That move may look somewhat normal for a player of Cade's caliber, but trust me, that clutch bucket broke my heart in a game I showed up expecting my raps to take home a W. Cade's currently third right behind the previously ranked Jalen Green in points per game among first year players, and despite not being at the top of the rookie ladder like he was expected to be as the number one pick, the crafty upside, shiftiness, and confidence on the biggest stage are still more present than ever for Cade. Number three, Franz Wagner of the Orlando Magic. Early on, the only two favorites for Rookie of the Year were Barnes and Mobley, but now, as the midway point of the season comes and goes for teams across the association, we've got a third runner in the race. The Orlando Magic were expecting Jalen Suggs to be the face of the franchise, selecting him with the fifth overall pick in 2021's draft. At the time, little did the Magic organization and fan base know that the German phenom, who they picked four spots later with the number eight overall pick, would turn out to be the far better player between he and Suggs. Wagner may be nearly seven feet and generally have the features of an old school big man at 220 pounds, but he's a blur in the open court with speed off the dribble and has the ability to go coast to coast after grabbing the board. Wagner's one of the younger rookies at age 20, but he spent two years gaining experience in the Euro League, which really helped him facing grueling competition. Competing against players twice his age and having to withstand the grind of two pro seasons before entering the NBA has clearly molded the German into the player he's proving to be in North Florida. He scored 38 points against the reigning champion Milwaukee Bucks, which is most among all rookies in terms of single game scoring. And as you can see from his brilliant averages of a rookie high 15.7 points on 46% shooting and 1.1 steals on the other end, that he's more than ready to compete with the best talent in the world. Number two, Evan Mobley of the Cleveland Cavaliers. As I'll break down at number one, you could go either way and like many top 10s, this is really subjective because Mobley and Barnes have performed nearly identically. The argument's definitely there for the Cavs' locomotive in the front court to be number one, so if you're a Cleveland fan or just a Mobley fan, don't hate on me too much. Mobley's lighting it up in January so far to the tune of 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 1.3 block per game averages in three games so far this month. Again, you could go either way. Offensively, his timing, touch inside both on and off the ball, and finishing with ferocity has been mesmerizing for such a young big. Plus, his passing versatility has made him one of Cleveland's better secondary playmakers, and that's part of why Mobley fits so seamlessly with a variety of Cavs players. With Ricky Rubio out for the rest of the year as of last week, along with Colin Sexton since early in the year, and without a number of players in recent weeks when he's been active, 
We've seen more on-ball work from Mobley. The rookie has demonstrated that he's more than up to the task as well. Mobley is shown to be more than capable of finding ways to generate angles along the baseline, leading to productive interior looks where he's been able to connect or utilize pump fakes to get into driving gaps at times leading to jams. Along with that, we've seen Mobley get into rhythm pull-ups and our fadeaways operating out of the mid post over the past month plus. On the season, he's converted 14 of 24 on his turnaround fadeaway attempts, which is 58.3%, and now 9 of 18 on pull-ups, which is 50%, to go along with 9 of 18 on turnaround hook shots. Before number one, main honorable mention to Alperin Shengun of the Houston Rockets, he still has to prove that his defensive versatility is good enough for him to be on the floor for more than 18 minutes per game for the bottom feeding Rockets, but Shengun's a very talented scorer. He's also a wizard of a passer. Last mentions before number one to Bones Highland of the Denver Nuggets, Jalen Suggs of the Orlando Magic, Davion Mitchell of the Sacramento Kings, Josh Christopher of the Houston Rockets, and Corey Kispert of the Washington Wizards. Number one, Scotty Barnes of the Toronto Raptors. There's been criticism about Scotty's aggressiveness, but I think the man's doing the perfect job working within Toronto's system and delivering a winning impact to the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference right now. Barnes is shooting 48% from the fields, which may be two points less than Mobley's 50% shooting. However, 28% of Scotty's attempts come from zero to three feet, while 33% of Mobley's attempts come in the restricted area, which means Scotty's taking deeper shots, making them with pure skill, while Mobley's taking advantage of his beastly size and strength up front. However you get it done, two points are two points, but the stats as well as the tape prove that Barnes has displayed the most upside and provided the most on-court impact of any rookie. The Raptors have faced a ton of injuries, not only protocols, and while Fred Van Vliet deserves a ton of credit and a separate video made about him quite frankly, the Raptors aren't over 500 without their rookie sensation. In 31 games, the same as Mobley, Scotty's averaging the same amount of points as Mobley, 0.1 less rebounds, 1.2 more assists, and he's shooting 1.8% better from three point range. And these two rooks are practically shooting the same amount of deep range bombs per game. So as you can see, the race is extremely close. But as a Raps fan who attended like six or seven games before the government shut it all down, how could I not go with my boy Scotty B? Also, I may be biased, but here's why I genuinely believe Scotty Barnes is the best rookie from the 2021 draft class. His off-ball defense could use some work, but his on-ball clamps have been extremely solid. Now that he's becoming a respectable shooter, the improvement in his game could frighten opposing teams on defense. Scotty's long strides in the open court with handles and shooting touch that resemble a player in the backcourt, in addition to his smooth footwork and fundamentally sound shooting, give him the entire package. The number four pick in 2021 continues to indicate to fans that he's got a legit chance to follow in the footsteps of dominant point forwards like LeBron James, Giannis Adetokounmpo, and Kevin Durant. If you're calling me crazy for those comparisons, give Scotty another season or two of experience and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. But in your opinion, who's the best 2021-22 rookie? Best answer in the comments down below earns next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Trickshotit, who says Ayo Dosumu has surprised me the most. Ayo was a second round pick in the draft and the Bulls picked him because he's a native. He has surprised me a lot with his defense. He can guard the stars of the opposition. Thanks for all your amazing takes. Hope you have a great one. Happy Clay Day. DFlow signing off.